In this video we're going to have a look at the revision preferences of Movie Magic Screenwriter. In case you don't know what revisions are, take a look at my video about how the production rewrite process works in general and maybe also the article about how to deal with revisions in Movie Magic Screenwriter so you have a general idea about what these settings do and what the terminology refers to. To get to the revision settings, click on the gear icon in the toolbar and then go to the revision section. If you're on the Mac, you can also go to Screenwriter Preferences. Almost all of these settings are about how revision marks are printed. So if you change one of these settings, you might not necessarily see an instant update in your script because some of them only show on the printout. In the first setting, you can choose whether you want Screenwriter to print a revision mark on the header if you exceed a certain number of revision marks on that page. This will put the revision mark next to your header information in addition to the revision mark for each line. The next setting lets you check whether you want to use an asterisk as the header revision mark in case you have defined a different mark for the document. Then the third setting down lets you choose whether you want the revision mark in the header to appear one line under the header rather than on the right. Next you can choose whether you want the revision marks for each lines printed on the documents that have more revision marks than you defined in the box up top or not. So if you check this, Screenwriter will not print the revision marks for each lines, just the revision mark in the header. If you leave it unchecked, it will print all the revision marks, including the one in the header, if you have the first option checked. The next setting asks you whether you want the program to print an asterisk in the header of a new A page if that page doesn't have any revisions. And that can happen if you add something to a page and the end of the page breaks over to a new A page, but the text on the new A page itself hasn't been changed. It just flows over to the next page because of the changes on the page before. Next you can check whether you want Screenwriter to print a whole page that has been omitted or not. If you delete a whole locked page from your screenplay and you go to the next revision color, you can have the omitted page printed as a blank page that just says omitted, or you can leave that page out. Note that Screenwriter will still print the page if there are new scene numbers that have been omitted. So it will only leave the page out when the whole page is deleted and there is no scene break on that deleted page. If you want to be sure, uncheck the setting and see if Screenwriter says non-printing omitted page at the top. This way you can check whether this page will print or not. Next, you can check whether you want to mark the following element with a revision mark if you delete one element completely. This comes into play when you delete, for example, an entire paragraph from the script. Since it's not really a change of the text itself, and also since the paragraph is gone, there isn't really any place where the program could put a revision mark. So you can check to have a revision mark on the following element instead, so that you can see that there has been a change at this point in the script. Then at the bottom you can check whether you want Screenwriter to update information in the header automatically, such as for example the revision color and the date. If you check this, it will change this information by itself, if you uncheck it, you will have to do it manually. Alright, those are the settings in the preferences section, but there are more having to do with locked pages. If you go to format element styles and then click on locked scripts at the bottom right, you have more preferences having to do with the revision process. Let's have a look at them also. At the top, you have these three radio buttons. Unlocked, locked and multi-locked for scene headings and page breaks. For some reason they added the possibility here to lock or even multi-lock your script, which is funny because when you try to lock it here, they tell you that you can do it, but they suggest you don't do it here, but rather with the lock the script command in the production menu. Okay, still you could if you wanted to. By the way, the difference between locking and multi-locking is that locking refers to locking the page numbers in as they are when you begin the production rewrite process. And later, when you have a lot of A pages, B pages and so on, and you want to commit those two so they stay unchanged, you can go into multi-lock mode so those A and B pages also stay exactly the way they are. And here below you have a couple of settings for this locking and multi-locking. 
you can define your omitted text as well as your through and and text. Through and and are used when you omit a row of scenes or pages, then ScreenWriter will give you the range of omitted elements. Then below you can change the numbering scheme for scenes and pages depending on which of these tab buttons, if you can call them that, you choose. As for the numbering scheme, it's best to talk to the production company and ask them what numbering scheme they want. Most likely they will let you know which settings to choose here. The important thing for you to know is that this is where you can set them up. And if that isn't enough for you in terms of setting up, click on use alternate scene numbering and another numbering window opens up where you have even more settings to choose for numbering. So here you can choose everything you want. Standard numbering, flip numbering, which is for example 12A instead of A12. Standard with numbers, which is for example 12 a1 instead of 12 AA, the same also flipped, or if that still isn't enough for you, you can select user defined and then these code fields down here activate and, and you can set up the numbering exactly the way you want it. Just click in one of those fields and down below you see these buttons activate that will enter the correct code snippet if you click on them. Also, if you hover over the text fields with your mouse, you see the code snippet list and you can enter them manually. Going back to the element styles window, there are a couple of settings left to check out. At the bottom you see this revision mark section. That's where you can replace the asterisk symbol with another symbol to indicate revised lines if you like and you can also set the margin for that revision mark on the right side of the page. Down below you see a checkbox where you can check if you want to allow long words to extend one or two letters over the margin. This can save you a line or two in the long run and lower your page count a little bit. Alright, we've gone through a ton of settings here. The only thing left is that check mark at the right above the OK button that is the same for all the element style settings where it says save as default for all new documents. If you check this the settings you choose here will be applied to all new documents that you create from this point on. And of course, the revert button at the bottom right resets all the settings to default. Okay, now you're a revision settings expert and nothing can keep you from going through the production rewrite smoothly and without worries.